This episode has been inspired by the Caravan Nuts video on his Ford Cougar and the really great point he made about all the magazines being full of really expensive brand new cars. So I thought it would be great if those of us not towing with brand new cars could talk about our own vehicles and what we like and dislike about them. So this is our 2013 D5 all-wheel drive R-Design Lux Volvo XC60, that's a big mouthful, which if you've managed to catch our 100 subscriber special, you'll, you'll know we're in the process of, of preparing to sell as we put in an order on a T6 4Motion VW Caravelle. But before we swap over, I wanted to make a little video for anyone looking at a slightly older tow car and wondering whether they're any good. Well, in my opinion, this vehicle is absolutely brilliant and will be a great choice for someone looking for great value in a not too enormous tow car category. As I mentioned, this is the D5 R design version, so right at the premium end of the XC60 offerings. But what does that mean? Well, for a start, it means you get a 215 PS engine, 414 Newton meters of torque, and 0 to 60 in 7.8 seconds, all in a package that scored 37 out of 37 available points in the relevant Euro NCAP test. Comes with Volvo's traditional safety features like whiplash protection, side impact, uh, roll stability control, dynamic stability and traction control, curtain airbags in the front and the back, and auto stop if the car detects a collision is imminent when we're travelling at less than 30 kilometres per hour. And to be fair, I have got that to activate twice, uh, both times in a car park. Once when I was pulling up to a security barrier, because those of you that know me will know I've got very short arms, so I have to get very close to the barrier to be able to, to put the cash or the ticket in the machine. Uh, and the car decided we were about to crash, so it stopped us. And another time in another car park where I wanted to edge in and get the front bumper as close as possible uh, to the wall because the parking spaces were quite short. Again, the car stopped us. Dad on a mission thinks this is hilarious. So the R design is the sports version with colour match body kit, a stiffer chassis, dampening and sportier interior trim, including these fabulous sports seats. Both the ordinary and the R design versions come in normal and luxe versions, and this is the luxe. So what features does this car have? Well, it's got all the usual things we've come to expect in luxury SUVs, so full reverse sensors in cameras, uh, the later makes it really easy when hitching up on your own, so that's important to us. And my next favourite bit of kit is the adaptive cruise control. It came as part of the normal equipment, and I didn't know about it before, but now I won't buy a car without it. For, when, for anyone who hasn't driven an adaptive cruise vehicle before, let me explain. So the system allows you to set a maximum speed and an amount of separation that you want between you and the vehicle in front, and then the car automatically speeds up and slows down. Gently, doesn't break hard, and it tries to keep you at your desired speed. It eases off the gas if it detects the vehicle in front is slowing down slightly and then applies the brakes if it's slowing down a lot. In that way it doesn't react too suddenly. For example, if someone happens to pull in front of you at a motorway exit but is going faster than you so the gap is increasing, it then it doesn't break suddenly. But it does break if some idiot happens to jump in front of you and then brake in front of you. People often ask, do the brake lights come on? Because it's not me pressing the brake pedal. And when we're towing, of course, we can see the brake lights reflected in the caravan. And so I can categorically say on this vehicle, yes, they do. So even when the adaptive cruise isn't on, you can leave the distance detection on with the cruise off. And there's a set of LEDs in the front dashboard, which warn you if someone is in your space. These LEDs also work with a side scan system. So if the car thinks someone is about to pull out of a side street into your path, these lights flash and there's an internal uh, warning buzzer like noise that happens as well. This system works pretty well, it doesn't go off uh, too often, we don't get too many false negatives unless we're on, for example, very bendy country lanes where big trees on sharp corners can be perceived as obstacles in the path. But of course the system can be turned off, so if it's getting too annoying, that can be done. This car is also fitted with blind spot detection. I can't say we've really used that this much as I'd like to pride myself in being aware of what's going on around me. But of course, for most of these things, it's there as an aid to hopefully save you in the event of some sort of momentary lapse of concentration at a potentially disastrous time. Again, this system's very reliable. In fact, I don't think it's ever gone off when there was nothing there, or indeed not gone off when there was something there. Um, the only time it does go off a little bit is when we're towing, when the side cameras can quite often catch the front of the caravan's corner, and if we're on anything other than a perfectly straight road. The other thing that was totally new concept to us when we bought this car five or so years ago was the electronic parking brake. This does take a bit of getting used to, and here instead of pulling up a mechanical lever, you pull on this switch and a load of servos lock the brakes on. 
You get used to it pretty quickly, as it has a reassuring solidity about it. But the oddest thing is that it acts as a sort of hill start assist, so you actually drive off with the parking brake still applied, and the car senses you using the accelerator and pushing it forward and auto disengages. This is really handy actually with the van on the back, especially for example on roundabouts, on slight slopes, where it's just one less thing you have to think about. I should point out though that this is the manual version. Uh, we test drove a non R Design Lux version of an auto box, and I have to say I absolutely hated it. It was awful. It felt so sloppy and all over the place and totally unresponsive. It was so bad that it nearly put us off getting an XC60 altogether. The other good point is that this is an all wheel drive system, not a four by not a true four by four. So all four wheels only become driven when the car detects it slipping. Otherwise it functions as a normal front wheel drive vehicle. Towing wise we had Volvo fit their own OEM tow bar and vehicle specific electronics so the car detects if there's a trailer attached and it can tell us for example if there's a ball gone although I still check visually and I believe though we've never tested it and certainly never felt it in operation or had any lights come up that there is indeed a trailer stability system on board so if the car detects waggling from the trailer it breaks individual wheels to stabilize the whole outfit the detachable swan neck is really hefty and it goes on with a reassuring clunk and can be locked into position to prevent theft there's a cutout in the R Design body kit, but there's a bespoke cover, so everything's really tidy. The only issue we've had is that our electronics plug is very, very tight fit, and it's so tidy and in the cutout in the bumper there that there really isn't a lot of room down there to get big, strong hands in to turn the plug and lock it on. Hence, we usually carry around a set of gentle expanding pliers to really help the, the plug to be locked in properly and not fall out en route. The only other thing that's a bit awkward about this car is it actually has quite a large turning circle. Now, I haven't compared data across uh, cars of similar size, so I don't know if it's this one in particular or just because of the sheer size of the thing, uh, but compared to a smaller vehicle that could still tow our particular caravan, the turning circle is quite wide, so it can make that a little bit awkward in very tight car parks. Other features in this car, uh, the CD player can handle DVDs and even has a remote control, though we've only ever played an awning assembly video. And it is, of course, the has the whole navigation thing, media, telephone, uh, voice control, all the rest of it within the system. The driver's seat's fully motorised with three memory positions, which is great when we're all away. And short little legged me does the towing and then dad on a mission takes over, who as he prefers to drive us around when we're on site. There's loads of leg room in the back, not just when I'm driving, and the seats are also super comfy. Front and in the middle and again in the boot, uh, there are 12 volt supply points. And in the boot, there's also lashing points and uh, bag holders and so on. And, and the boot itself is fairly cavernous. We're also lucky enough to actually have a proper spare wheels. I hate those foam kits. In terms of on-road performance, this car is no slouch, especially considering its size and practicality. It goes around corners really well. That's probably due to the stiffer R-Design chassis than the absolutely mahoosive 20 inch wheels doing their job. And pulling our 1400 kilo MT PLM van along on the back, it's, this car is very firmly in control. In terms of stats, the curb weight is 1685. Its max gross is 2505 kilos and it's rated to tow 1800 kilograms. The auto version is rated for 2000 kilos because it's heavier, but you've already heard my opinion on that. Having said that, hopefully in the newer version, the auto boxes are much improved because that really was horrible. So there we go. Those are my thoughts. Uh, it's not a very representative survey, obviously, because this is the only vehicle which I've actually ever towed with. I've, of course, been a passenger in many other car tow cars and vans, uh, for example, that my parents owned, and in fact, learned to drive in a van. Nevertheless, I hope you found these thoughts helpful. And if you were thinking of investing in a used one, I say definitely go for it. Obviously, get it checked out, uh, but absolutely go for it because we've been really happy with this one. The servicing costs have been entirely reasonable. Unlike the uh, three series touring BMW we had before, we don't have warning lights coming on every few weeks. And so it has to go back to the garage. And if you keep your servicing up to date with Volvo, every time you have a year's service, they actually give you a year's roadside assistance if you ever need it provided through their network. Um, so it works out a better value than it, it might seem on paper. So one of these second hand I've, I've seen around the market somewhere about 14 or 15 grand. Still a good chunk of cash for a second hand vehicle, but I think you get a huge amount of vehicle for the money and therefore it represents good value. 
I'd probably go for one of these in preference to something newer and lower spec. So that's all for now. I hope you found that helpful and we look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye for now.